Welcome back, everybody, to the Montana State Bobcat Dynasty on NCAA Football 06. Today, we're going to be taking on the Idaho State Bengals. Josh Johnson, he's an impact quarterback with seven touchdowns and four interceptions and a 68% completion percentage. He seems to be a pretty solid quarterback so far. Bernard Derrick, it looks like he's going to be missing today's game due to injury, so the backup's going to have to be playing for them. Their receiving court looks to be pretty solid. Their offensive line, better than ours so far, at least statistically speaking, it seems. And their defense has been, has been doing a pretty good job getting to the quarterback today, and they also have picked off quarterbacks four times for, so far this season. They are at 500 coming into this game, 2-1 in conference play. Meanwhile, the Bobcats are on a three-game winning streak, looking to continue to tear through this Big Sky Conference. We already defeated Northern Arizona and Weber State, and now we're looking to extend our lead in the conference here against the Bengals. They're having a better season than normal, I would say. They did defeat the Vandals, They're probably their biggest rival, and Idaho has been really good throughout this series. That is who we're going to be taking on in the next video, but today we're going to be focusing on the Bengals. Kicking it off here, it's going to go to about the 8-yard line. Heath is going to return this one down the right sideline here. He's going to get pushed out of bounds, or tackled rather, at about the 50. So some good field position for the Bengals. It's a high snap for Johnson on first down, and he's going to be sacked. A great start there. William Jackson just came in unblocked on the blitz and brings him down for a loss of six. Johnson to throw on second down, but that pass is going to get broken up. I think that was Eugene on the coverage. Now on third and long, Johnson looks to throw again. He's got time in the pocket. Floats this one out to the right side. Johnson with some toe drag swag on the sideline, working on Chris Bonner there and getting the third down conversion. That was a gain of 19 yards. Actually more than that because of the sack yardage. So I was closer to about 25 yards. On the new set of downs though, they're not picking up anything on first down. Johnson the passer, he had a man open over the middle, but unable to connect with him there. On third down, Johnson takes a snap looking to throw again, airing it out to the left side, but the pass is going to be broken up by Tim Hughes. The offense stays on the field on fourth down as the Bengals look to roll the dice, taking a shot to the end zone, but the pass is going to sail out of the back of it, an interesting decision there, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Brandon Adriano is going to pick up six yards on first down for the Bobcats. Now Larry Stevens to pass for the first time today, but the pressure gets there and forces an incompletion. An early third down situation for the Bobcats throwing the slant route there. Curtis Brown jumps up and gets it. That's a very tight throw to make there for Larry Stevens, but he gets it out to his man. That's going to set us up into Idaho State territory. Stevens takes a shot to the end zone here, and the pass is picked by Johnson. Not the best read. You know, you want to avoid those impact players in the secondary, avoid throwing uh, their way if you have to, and I didn't have to throw it there. I was just felt like taking a shot, and we ended up paying the price. First down pass is going to fall incomplete for the Bengals. Here's second down, firing to the left side. He's got Burton down the left sideline, getting behind the defense, and he's going to take this to the crib. Touchdown, Bengals. He just got wide open, got behind his man. It was pure man coverage there, and uh, just wasn't, wasn't great defense by Montana State, allowing an 80-yard touchdown. Stevens is going to run for this. On first down, he's going to get tripped up at midfield. Here's a run from Brandon Adriano to the left side. He broke through a tackle for a grand total of zero yards. Now Stevens, under a lot of pressure, gets away from one sack, but then still gets brought down in the backfield. Pretty bad job by the offensive line on that play. It's going to result in a loss of 14. Now on third and a mile, Stevens airs this one out to the right side. It's caught! Larry Lane on the right sideline. I don't know how he came down with that, but that's going to set us up all the way down at the 10-yard line. Adriano on first down. He's going to run to the right side and picks up about a gain of three. Second down for the Bobcats here. Stevens rolling to his left. He's got a wide open running lane. He's going to take it. Touchdown, Montana State. Here, he wanted to throw for it, but everyone was covered except for him. You got to account for someone like Larry Stevens, who's a pretty good dual threat quarterback. That's going to tie the game up at seven apiece. 
Faking the run on first down. Now Cardi's going to make the reception. Breaks through a couple of tackles. And there are no defenders even near him. High stepping into the end zone for the Bengals score. Back to back place for the Bengals that result in 80 plus yard touchdowns. First one was 80 yards. This one 84. And this is just awful tackling. He is surrounded by white jerseys here. That is not the first time we've played against the Bengals and just been really bad at tackling. All the way back in season one, I think, we had a very similar play to that where we just could not bring down the receiver. So very quickly, back on offense are the Bobcats. Stevens is going to run for five yards on second down. That's going to lead to a third down and five scenario. Stevens looking to run again, but he's going to throw at the last second. He's got his tight end, Ryan, out across the 40-yard line. Five first downs in this first quarter thus far for Montana State. Stevens has been pretty good at improvising, as have all Bobcat quarterbacks, it seems, throughout this series. Stevens looking to run again. He takes us to the left side for about six or seven yards. Likely the last play of the first quarter. Adriano goes up the middle and picks up just about a yard. An early third down situation here in the second quarter. And Adriano's going to pick that up and more. 19 rushing yards for him so far today. Now Stevens throws over the middle for Gerard Doolin. Diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Bobcats. A great 19-yard touchdown reception from Gerard Doolin. And that's going to tie the game up now at 14 apiece. Stevens had a little bit of pressure coming to him, but he stays steady in the pocket. Gets it to his man over the middle. And as I said, tying the game up there at 14 apiece. Here we are, Jason McMillan kicking it off. And... I mean, this doesn't happen as much as it used to, but every now and then I still screw up my kickoffs. They're going to have the ball at the 35-yard line. The first down pass is caught, but very much out of bounds, intended for Johnson. Josh Johnson now dropping back to throw. He gets hit as he let it go. Gets it out to Burton, though, who breaks out of another tackle down the left sideline. Finally gets tripped up at about the 25-yard line. Man, our defense has got to start tackling these wide receivers. Johnson taking a shot to the end zone there, but the pass is going to be broken up by Jed Torrey, who's really done a much better job in the secondary this year than he did last. Second down and 10 now. Johnson drops back to throw again. He's got a man open over the middle, but misses him on that throw. Now it's going to be third down and 10. Johnson looking to throw again, going over the middle. He's got the other Johnson down at about the 10-yard line. That's going to make this a goal-to-go situation. Here's a toss to the right for Hart, who gets taken down in the backfield. It's Marquez Randolph getting the tackle for loss. Hart, with another carry, takes it up the middle for about two or three yards. Now it's going to be third and goal from the 14. Johnson throws to the left side. He's got his man, who doesn't really pick up a whole lot there, as James Green had the tackle. But they are in field goal range, and the kick is up. It is good, and the Bengals take the three-point lead. The Bobcats trying to go downfield with just about two and a half minutes left to play. There's Michael Ryan in the flat making his second catch today, picking up about nine yards. Brandon Adriano is going to get the carry to the right side, and the blocking just was not there. Stevens looking to throw for it on third down over the middle. Michael Ryan with the diving reception and a new set of downs. Here's a direct snap to the running back, Adriano, who makes a defender miss. Stiff arms another, steps out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That's 47 total rushing yards for this Bobcat team so far, while the Bengals are in the negatives there. Here's Stevens running the football. He makes a nice move there, spinning away from the first guy and getting out to the 43. Stevens fires quickly to the left side, but the pass is off the mark intended for Brown. Second and 10, Stevens under a little bit of pressure, gets it out to Doolin, who makes a great catch there for a gain of four. Third down, Stevens under some immediate pressure, but once again has an open running lane, gets a nice block there from Curtis Brown, and steps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Under a minute left to go in this second quarter. Stevens rolls to his right here. Might as well take off and run again, picking up four yards. We're going to run the football on second down here with Brandon Adriano. Cuts it back to the right side and only picks up about a yard or two. 
Looking to convert on third down. Stevens rolls to his left. He's got another open running lane. He's not going to take it, though, as he tried throwing it. The pass is incomplete, but that was probably for the better as there's some pretty tight coverage there. We're going to bring out Jason McMillan for the field goal, which is going to tie the game up at 17 apiece, taking us to the half. Montana State gets the football to start off the second half now. Brandon Adriano right up the middle, picks up about 12 yards. That's probably his best run of the game so far. Here's another one for Brandon Adriano on the draw play now. Breaks out a one tackle and still gets brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Going five wide on second down. Stevens rolls to his right. He doesn't really have anyone open, so he's just going to take it himself once again. He's been very efficient in the running game so far today. 70 yards on the ground, and that's going to lead to a fresh set of downs. Now, Brandon Age round. No, it's his turn to pick up a first down. A big run for him to the left side. He goes out of bounds at the 43, or the 34-yard line, rather. Stevens, he's got a man open downfield looking for Doolin, but he threw that off his back foot. Probably wouldn't have been a good idea to set your feet before throwing that. And then maybe it would have been a good idea to throw that over the linebacker there. Lewis comes away with the interception and then gets brought down by the face mask. So tack on an extra five yards after that. Uh, that's one of those interceptions. I honestly think it was a good read. I just That's one of the ones I blame on Larry Stevens. He didn't throw it over the linebacker. Maybe I got to float it up there or something or do a precision pass of some type. But I don't know, man. I, he just threw that right to the linebacker. I thought I had a man open over the middle. But you know what? What's done is done. And we got to trust our defense now to hopefully get us a stop. Johnson to the right side. The pass is picked. Holy cow. Brock Eugene jumped in front of that one. Or rather, I guess, behind it more so. And came away with an incredible interception, getting us the football right back. Now Stevens off his back foot. Downfield, somehow connecting with Curtis Brown. I'm going to be honest. I pushed the wrong button in that kind of a situation. It somehow still managed to work out, though, as Curtis Brown makes a spectacular catch at the 28-yard line. Adriano right up the middle on first and 10. He's going to pick up a gain of six. Adriano taking this one to the left side again. Stiff arms a defender, but still gets brought down for a big loss, leading to third down and long. Larry Stevens rolling to his right. Is he going to run? No, he's going to throw off the mark there. Once again, throwing off his back foot. We are in field goal range, though, for Jason McMillan from 45 yards out. And then I was just not paying enough attention. We get a delay a game. That's going to make this a 50-yard field goal attempt instead. So McMillan, his kick is up. And it is too far to the right. He had enough power to it. But the accuracy just wasn't there on that one. So we come away with a grand total of zero points off of that turnover. Johnson rolls to his left, right into a sack, loses the football, and Montana State gets it right back again at the 30-yard line, capitalizing on that there. Or maybe not capitalizing on it. Let's look to capitalize on this turnover, though. But just, you know, even with the missed field goal, still able to get the football right back. There's a bad drop by Jesse Lester. That's going to make it second and 10 where we run the football with Adriano and he picks up about four yards. Third down now. Stevens under a lot of pressure rolling to his right. Throws to the end zone for Doolin and it's in and out of his hands as he got rocked uh, trying to make that catch there. And then our offensive lineman Chris White is going to have to check out of the game with an injury. So here's a little bit of a shorter field goal for Jason McMillan, and this time he splits the uprights, giving Montana State the three-point advantage. We get an update on Chris White. He has a bruised elbow and will not be returning to today's game. So now the Bengals with the football down by three, but looking to uh, take the lead on this next driver, at the very least tie things up. An incomplete pass on first down. That is going to lead to second down, where the pass is nearly intercepted by Eugene. Third and 10 now. Johnson takes the snap. Surveys the field. He's going to take a shot deep. Looks like he's got a man open. Indeed he does. It is Burton inside of the red zone where he gets tripped up there. Another big play for this Bengals offense. That's basically all their points have come off of big plays thus far today. That one doesn't go for a touchdown, but it sets them up in range for a touchdown. And they're going to get it. They get kind of lucky there as it's going to be a fumble recovery by the offensive lineman. And that's going to give them the lead. 
Idaho State up by four now. Stevens rolling to his left. He's going to run for it yet again, picking up the first down before he gets tripped up. Out at the 31-yard line now, Brandon Adriano with the carry, just running into a pile of bodies and picking up what looks to be a first down. So that's going to take us to the fourth quarter where Montana State trails by four. Stevens rolling to his right, throws at the last second for Doolin, who makes the reception at about the 30-yard line, making the catch there, you know, kind of un unorthodox or whatnot there as he makes that reception. It was kind of a weird play, but you know what? I'm going to take it. Faking the run now, throwing to the left side for Curtis Brown, and it's in and out of his hands there. Second down and 10. Well, it just turned into second down and 5 after a nice offsides penalty there. That's going to make this a little bit easier. Stevens rolling to his left. Throwing over the middle. Pass is picked by Gordon. Out across the 30-yard line. The 40. Midfield. Getting close to the other 40 where he is finally brought down. And just not a good play there by Larry Stevens. Uh, most of his turnovers, they just, they're forced plays that don't even need to be forced. And that's going to set up the Bengals with some nice field position to possibly go up by two scores. A nice play made by the defense there as they bring the running back down for a loss of three. He's going to get another carry though. Makes up for that big loss. Gets all the way down inside of the 10-yard line where he's finally tripped up. That's going to make this first and go. Throwing to the end zone for Burton. I don't think he quite got it. And they're going to mark him down at the one. Just inches to go now. They're going to give the football to Hart. He's in for the Bengals score. And that's going to give them an 11-point lead with just three and a half minutes left to play. So kicking this one off now, it looks like that is Curtis Brown going to be returning it from about his own one or two yard line. He's going to take this across the 30-yard line. The 40, midfield. Can he take it all the way? The 20-yard line inside of the 10 where he gets brought down that's still going to give us some fantastic field position and Tony Everett who made the touchdown saving tackle is kind of slow to get up there so now on first and goal we got the touchdown it's Michael Ryan probably one of his biggest games of the season so far as he comes down with this touchdown that was a huge kick return there that made this uh comeback a little bit easier I would say can we complete the comeback, though? Well, first, we're going to go for two points to make it a three-point game. Larry Stevens gets in for the touchdown, and we're down by just three points. So after that nice two-point conversion, we're going to be kicking this one off with McMillan. This is a lot better of a kick. It's actually going to go inside of the end zone here for Samson to return it. He's going to take it up the middle and then get stripped of the football. Harrison is there for the fumble recovery. He forced the fumble and he recovered it. That's going to set us up with great field position here. And we very well could complete this comeback. Adriano is going to pick up six yards on first down. Stevens rolling to his right, throws off his back foot, and the pass is going to be incomplete looking for Doolin. Third and four, Stevens rolling to his left. Has got, they've got a spy on him this time, though. Pretty smart by them, but that doesn't matter. Larry Stevens is going to get past him and pick up the 18th first down of the Bobcats today. Here's a little bit of an option play for Stevens, who gets it out to Brandon Adriano, who dives to the first down, and I think he did get that. No, they're going to mark him inches size. So it's second down in inches. And we're going to throw for a touchdown. Gerard Doolin, his second of the ball game so far, is going to give Montana State the lead, er erasing an 11-point deficit just like that. So now Josh Johnson's looking to air it out on first and 10. And then there's Craig. Or not Craig. Why did I call him Craig? His last name's Cardi. Moss in the safety, taking it to the end zone for the Idaho State touchdown. Their third touchdown from 80 yards or longer. Just a huge play there. And that's going to give them the lead right back. Brandon Adriano right up the gut. That's going to get him over 100 yards rushing so far today. We're going to give him the football again where he picks up a nice gain of three. Under two minutes left to go. Now Stevens rolling to his left. He might as well run for it again. Stepping out of bounds just shy of the 40 or actually right on the 40. And now he's over 100 yards rushing. Stevens to the right side. You know what? Might as well run with it again. He's got an open running lane sliding at the 23. First down, now running it with Brandon Adriano right up the middle, and he's going to pick up about two yards. We are in field goal range, so that could tie the game up and possibly send it to overtime, but I would rather just win this in regulation. 
Gerard Doolin makes a heck of a catch there, but unfortunately cannot get his feet in bounds. Third and eight. Now Stevens is going to throw over the middle. Touchdown, Gerard Doolin. His third of the ball game, making a spectacular catch over the middle there. Take a second look at this. Stevens had a little bit of pressure coming to him there. Adriano does a great job picking up the blitz. And then Gerard Doolin, he gets rocked at making that reception. Holds onto the football and gives Montana State the late lead. Trying to put together a game-winning drive now. Cardi makes the catch on second down, picking up a gain of three. Josh Johnson now looking to throw on third down. He's going to throw off his back foot. He's got Burton over the middle, who then gets rocked, coughs up the football. Marquez Randolph recovers it, and that might just do it for this game. Idaho State has made a ton of fourth-quarter mistakes, and that could very well lead to a loss for them. All we have to do is bleed this clock down. Adriano on first down, doesn't go anywhere. Idaho State burns a timeout. He's going to run the football here again and doesn't really go anywhere. And the Bengals are going to burn their last timeout. Third and seven, Adriano to the right side. He just needs a first down. And that's exactly what he's going to get at the 25-yard line. That is going to be your ball game. Montana State 42, Idaho State 38. Man, going into the fourth quarter, it was a 24-20 ball game in favor of Idaho State. And it was just an insane fourth quarter. That's got to be one of the craziest fourth quarters I've seen in this series, probably. Just back and forth there. Idaho State took the 11-point lead with three and a half left to go. I was like, this is going to be tough. But then we get the big kick return, get into the end zone, and then they fumble on their, their kick return. Like, special teams kind of killed them there. And then also, on their uh, attempted game-winning drive, that big fumble... Fourth quarter mistakes cost Idaho State the game. And that is going to make this my number five greatest game of all time. We've had some real good thrillers so far this season. Over 200 yards passing and four touchdowns for Larry Stevens. He did also have three interceptions and under 50% completion percentage. He did run for over 100 yards, as did Brandon Adriano. Michael Ryan had a touchdown and then Gerard Doolin, probably the hero of this game, with three touchdown receptions. And then the defense came up huge there. We got the sack. We got the interception from Brock Eugene. And then we forced four fumbles and ended up recovering three of them. Looking at some of the other Big Sky games this week, Weber State is finally in the win column as they defeat Montana 35-24. Sacramento State's going to get this victory over Eastern Washington 38-24. And then finally... Idaho loses again, but it is to Iowa, number six in the country. Uh, they win 41 to 24. That's going to wrap up this video. Thank you all for watching. If you're not already subscribed, that would be awesome if you did that and left a like on the video as well. But until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.